Hello, everybody, and welcome to the September 18th Trips and Traps. Andy Serlin, joined by Richard Migliori. And we've got a lot of turf racing to talk about. Pretty uh, packed show today, a lot of trips, and uh, some rides I'm sure guys would want back. Yeah, no, I thought we had a lot of interesting races run here last week, and we're actually going to do six races. And we're going to start with the second race from September 10th, and a race that featured, Richie, just no pace whatsoever. It hurt a bunch of horses in here. Well, it looked to me as though there were a few guys that came out of the gate in good order and looked like they had every opportunity to go on and make the pace and basically take control of the race. And then for some reason, they put on the emergency brakes. Yeah, I don't understand why Jose Ortiz was aggressive with Inventor's Gate. It was absolutely the right move early. Suddenly, as you say, he put the brakes on. You see the horse on the outside runs second. His riders got the brakes on him. Inventor, a dividend who had no speed, he dropped out of the race. Joel Rosario ends up taking control of this race. The horse is on the outside and fourth now, and he makes the winning move. Yeah, and his horse has a tendency to break a little slow, broke a little bit slow this time, and he got to kind of marching on, and Joel was looking for a place to fit in behind him, and he said, well, wait, nobody wants to go, so I'm just going to go ahead and let him go on, and you could see the difference of this horse's stride once he was allowed to run a little more freely. He got so comfortable, and when a horse gets in a good rhythm, they're not expending as much energy as when they're being held up. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that's a great point, Richie, and I, you know, and also, he's in the good rhythm, and everybody else isn't. Well, and especially if you go back to Inventor's Gate, he went from having a perfect position to being shuffled back to now at the point where he's fifth, and he never really found a comfortable situation after that. He was always either in between or searching for room, and the winner has this unhindered path in front, and he just seemed very happy. You know, without, I don't want to be overly critical, but I do get the impression with a lot of these races that you're not having a lot of work being done beforehand to determine what kind of race is being run. Is it a race, and here's the here's the horse from Better's Gate, Dividend just is a bad victim here, makes a big wide move from last and actually runs a, a winning race. But it's like they don't realize there's not much pace on paper. Can I do something to take advantage of that? Well, I think it's very important to do that homework, to have a pretty good idea of what the pace is going to be, who the pace is going to be, who's around you. Those horses' habits and tendencies, those riders' habits and tendencies, but then also be open-minded to change because sometimes things will change when the gate opens, but at the same time, you have to go in at least with being prepared. Yeah, being prepared with a plan and then a backup plan when things, as they frequently do, go awry. And this was a race where, once again, the five's in a good position early, and that position was taken away with lax riding. It's like, why ride aggressively and then unaggressively? Well, right. If you go in with the intention, then stick with that plan and go forward. Don't go backwards. And you know, when we say it all the time, get your position going forward. If you're getting shuffled back, you're being victimized. No, I agree completely. I agree. you got to seize the bull by the horns, as Joel did when he won that race. We'll turn our attention to the second race in the show, and this is the sixth race from last Wednesday, September 10th. And this was a horse, Bull Lee, that just, I mean, I guess that it was a tough situation early for Bull Lee because a long shot, a 50-to-1 shot, Essence and Noon, was sort of gunning after him, and Raj kind of wanted to get away from that horse. But, boy, he got ridden by the one horse in the stretch, but, boy, did Bull Lee have a tough trip. Yeah, Raj was in a very tough position. When you look out for, as a jockey, and you're on a horse, a real contender, and you look over and you see a 50-to-1 shot next to you, you go, gosh, I don't want to be hooked up with this horse. But... The way Bold Lee was going, maybe he should have just left him alone because he was traveling well there. He wasn't having to send him to be there. And I think if Raj had this one to do over, he would have let him be. Well, yeah, and then the other one came, and he took back behind him, and now here comes the favor behind him, and I thought it was very interesting. Arad Ortiz is riding the one. Now, Arad's behind him. Arad spent so much time trying to keep Raj in as he was the second choice, and the horse on paper he had to beat, no doubt about it. He kind of missed the horse behind him, the gray horse who circles him. I don't think he was beating him, but he spent a lot of time keeping Raj in, not enough time thinking about who was behind him. Well, at some point, you have to say, you know, it's time to go forward and get some momentum, and I agree with you. I don't think he was going to win either way. Bold Lee was probably the best horse. He had just a very, very <laughs> tough time. Think about you're driving on the freeway and you're in the left lane and your exit's coming and you want to get over to the right. And every time you go to edge over, someone kind of rushes up and keeps you pinned there. Now you can put your blinker on and hopefully some nice driver will allow you to cut over to get off at your exit. But here, there's no blinkers and they're all competing for the same thing. So they're not going to let you out of the spot. I know what you, we were talking about because that's how I felt when I was trying to find my way around the airport when we were leaving Toronto on Monday morning. But that's another story. And interesting race boldly an unlucky horse who had a brutal trip we'll look at another horse now this is the ninth race from september 11th and the one morris pass gets a nightmare trip here but i think at the end of the day we kind of feel like this horse might be a trap 
Yeah, it, to me, watching her, she doesn't look like she's easy to ride. It. She's the kind of horse that doesn't help a rider out. And yeah, she gets has to steady along for a long ways, but when she finally does get in the clear, I don't know how well she was actually finishing. I agree. Now, you were talking about wondering if she wants more distance, ultimately, that maybe she can be a little more one pace to get herself in the race. She is getting steadily back here, a situation where maybe she just has nowhere to go and she's a little bit rank, Richie. Yeah, it looks like she wants to get keen, and then every time you have to steady her, she'll let it go but as soon as you put your hands down she wants to then run back up on heels and it's so hard for a rider to, when a horse doesn't listen to your cues you know it's not like driving a car you let off the accelerator in a car the car backs off with these horses some of them they get it in their head they want to go forward even if there's no place to go and it makes the rider look bad and i'm not sure what you could do with her if she'd been in the outside because maybe if she's in the outside she runs off on you i don't know what position she figures to be in where she's a horse that's going to get comfortable see a horse like this to me andy if i was riding her i would ask him to run her a little further like maybe a mile and an eighth here and i'd put her on the lead yeah. then maybe she would just stay one pace the whole way and, and be very aggressive with her early and make sure that you secure that position so you're not in this position where you're you're constantly having to tap on the brakes and look for a spot. Right, that might be the best idea for her because it's just not really working the situation. And what caught my eye was she and the two were both sort of players here. They come in the stretch relatively close. I thought the two kind of ran off from her. If the one really was that good after the trouble she had, as we'll see with a horse that I think might be one of the next ones to look at, Neck of the Moon, they're supposed to come running with a strong run at the end. She never really had that run. It didn't, and it appeared when she showed up in the camera again late that she was running maybe more than she was because she was passing a horse or inside. I think that was more a function of that horse stopping, and the optical illusion is that that one's really running at that point. You know, I totally agree, and the more I watched it, she had trouble, as you say, a difficult horse to ride. Maybe they stretch her out, and that'll be interesting. If they stretch her out in a race that doesn't have a lot of speed, that might be an interesting opportunity to see if you can put your plan into play and if it works for her. Yeah, I, I used to like that. When I'd ride a horse that would give me a hard time with that, I'd say, let me try this one time, and if it doesn't work, it's on me. And I'd bounce them out and try to put them at least one, two, three, where they weren't in the in in, in anybody's pocket. I, I find sometimes you, know, you get a horse that's one of these sort of O for types that's like one for thirteen and short prices a lot of times in a closer. If you get an opportunity sometimes to put those horses on the lead, it does seem like sometimes they get a little more brave up front than having to pass horses. Or you get these horses that want to run there, make the lead, and pull up. If you put them on the lead from the start, they basically wait on horses, so they rate themselves along on the lead, and then it's funny, when a horse comes to them, they'll actually go on. They've already broken through that plane. That, that's something that used to work a great deal. No, I agree, and it seems like a lot of those hanging types are horses that are coming from behind. We're going to now look at the third race from September 13th, and I feel like this horse, and maybe it's one of these things where I'm projecting my opinion of a horse, Perfect Stormy. This horse has been unlucky. He actually isn't that bad. He looks bad on paper. It feels to me and I thought this might have been a little the case here. The riders lack some confidence in him. And I think in doing so is he's going to drop way off the picture. I just feel as though he got put the time before this. He had a wide trip at Saratoga, never had a chance. I thought in this situation, he smoothly, you'll see him bring himself into the race. And I just felt as though Wilmer Garcia just didn't have the confidence in him going forward when ultimately he has horse in the stretch. Well, I've never sat on the horse, so I can't say, you know, what he feels like to handle. But it seemed to me there was a critical moment when he does cruise up into the picture, and he cruises up into the picture, that if he had committed to going forward, he would have been able to get the spot that he winds up eventually having to steady out of. And, and we're going to be able to illustrate it when he, when he does and, show up. And you'll see it with the eventual winner who I've circled there, and that's the one horse, Hadrian, whose rider, Manny Franco, he asserts himself and he gets position. He makes position. Well, it's like the difference between bacon and eggs. The chicken's involved, but the pig's committed. You have to <laughs> commit to that, that idea. Otherwise, you know what? You can get yourself hurt going there if you're not completely committed. Right, and he does commit there, and he does a great job throwing the needle. Now, here is Perfect Stormy, and this is what we were talking about before. He facilely moves up towards the spot. Now, he'll end up a little bit behind the widest horse towards the front, the pink horse. And I understand Wilmer says, I don't want to try to circle around him. But that horse drops off and squeezes him out of the hole, but, Richie. But he had, he had, that's why he had a gun right there right. before that happened because the horse in the pink I know what his rider's thinking gosh I'm so wide it's going to look horrible on camera I got to see if I can just tuck in just a little bit and what Wilmer needed to do at that point before he did that get was there. gun and get there his shoulders are in there he can hold the spot well he doesn't do it he loses position he loses momentum but now you watch him he's really running and you're going to actually see him run up on the heels of horses and Wilmer has to steady a bit late I just feel like this horse 
he's better. You know, he's kind of worse a rider. And sometimes you look at him, you think, oh, he's just he's a career made. He's had a lot of chances. He's not that bad this horse. Give him a chance to win a race, and he might win. He's not that bad. And the way he ran up on heels late lends itself to what you said, that maybe he didn't realize how much horse he has underneath him or have confidence in the horse because he caught those horses quicker than Wilmer anticipated. That means he's running forward. I think with a different trip, he definitely could have won. Yeah, I I'm interested in Perfect Stormy going forward. Uh, we will look at the eighth race on September 14th, and this is a horse neck of the moon. He's not exactly a buried horse, but, man, does he have a brutal trip, Richie. This horse really gets, gets or shuffled she. back. Or she. I, I'm sorry. Um, my, my fault. Yeah, but... Um, I this to me was uh, because I, I Rad Ortiz was too complacent and he needed to be more aware of the horses around him. When you wind up in behind a 40 to one shot, you have to already in your mind start figuring out how am I gonna negotiate inside or around this horse because at some point you've got to anticipate her stopping in your face. No, I agree. And this is an easy horse to see with the blue silks. Now, she does have the rail, and that's a tough spot, but maybe a little bit earlier was when he should have tried to get off the rail and get the two-path. Because if you get yourself the two-path, you're leaving yourself with options. When you're down the rail, Richie, you've got only one option, hoping and praying. Well, and, and that's the thing what we've always talked about. The best riders consistently have always given themselves more than one option. Jerry Bailey was great at giving himself three or four options. And, you know, he has horse, and now he's basically we getting shuffled, shuffled back to nowhere and actually ultimately last turning for home. No, this horse really, I mean, this is a brutal trip. He's, he's taken out of the picture, and this is a horse that could easily have been in a spot like there or something, and instead is all the way back here. And I'm going to tell you something. The race may be pretty much over, but when this horse gets out in the clear, look how far back Neck of the Moon is. I mean, she comes with a serious run. I think this is the difference between her and Mora's past from the earlier race. Yeah, she's fi really finding her stride here. And she's trying to run so fast, she actually switched back to her left lead. And horses do that when they're just trying so hard to go fast. And she really settled back to her right lead there and really is coming with a run. And a very unfortunate loser getting caught up behind a horse that was always going to stop in her face. And that's what you always have to guard against. And you have to go in with a plan. Be aware, okay, this horse probably going to outrun me a little bit, but what am I going to do when she does drop over and get that position? No, I agree. And this is just a horse that just had a world of trouble, neck of the moon, and obviously is better than the finish shows. The last race we're going to show is the last race in the week. This is the 10th race in the 14th. We're going to look at a couple horses. Brother O'Connell gets stayed out of the race early. Ultimately, I just don't think he's that good. I think Richie agrees. But he's the four horse in, in green. The five horse Scooby Dude, uh, she wasn't the best horse, or he wasn't the best horse in the race, but he was probably the second best horse in the race. And a horse you definitely want going forward. And, and you know, we've been a little bit critical here and there. I'm going to give Wilma Garcia a pass on this one. He's a green horse. He's running off the bridle. It's hard for a rider to gauge how much he has on, underneath him. And you're trying to get his attention. So once you get his attention and he takes a hold of the bit and starts going forward, do you risk taking it back yeah. away from him and maybe he doesn't get going again? Well, then we're going to show him on the show and say, why did he restrain the horse? It's a very, very difficult situation. I think it also harkens back to something you've talked talked about in prior weeks, Richie, and here is Scooby-Doo, here's Brother O'Connell, but Scooby-Doo is really the one we're focused on. Horses getting out in the clear, and as opposed to trying to find some cover, once this horse gets out in the clear is when he really takes off on Wilbur. Yeah, and, and right here, he basically gets flushed completely out in the clear as we're watching uh, Brother O'Connell have to steady there, but I would, watching the head-on, I thought Brother O'Connell was a horse that was trying to get out. He was hanging on one rein, it was difficult to handle. So of course now, Scooby-Doo makes this big, wide, extended run and you, you have to anticipate he's going to get tired because he is a first time starter but from a mental standpoint I think this race moves him up markedly and he'll be a much different horse to ride the second time no I, I agree I, I like this horse I think he's a talented horse them their eyes is the dam and I was a huge fan of hers a really nice runner for the same connections Aikendale Farm and the Kathleen Farron does a good job of these horses I mean he makes that long extended 3-4 wide run gets the lead and the truth is he never really quits I me mean, he only loses the second by about three quarters of a length Brother O'Connell's back here. He has no run when it matters. The winner puts in a huge run for back here. He was winning no matter what. Scooby-Doo, though, I'd like to see them when he gets a little bit more experience. Yeah, and I really think this race will go a long way. Sometimes it takes certain horses two or three races. I think this was about three races worth of experience and, and just seasoning he got out of this race. Do you think Wilmer Garcia, when he got out in the clear and he got to run and thought, rut row? <laughs> <laughs> wow, we should end the show on that. Anyway, we had a lot of stuff going on here. I do love the name Scooby-Doo, and I agree. We can always use your help. Trips and traps at nyrank.com.